Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Cooper Stuff. This is a sort of sword and shield episode about zeal for the Lord. What is zeal for the Lord? What does that actually mean? Psalm 69 verse 9 says this, For zeal for your house has consumed me. We know that, right? The zeal of the Lord has consumed me. Zeal. What does zeal mean? It's a great word. Zeal. Passion. All right? Um, I want to talk about this scripture. I think this might encourage you today, but I want to talk about it a little bit in light of a bunch of other things that Psalm 69 actually says. When we say zeal for the Lord, a lot of the times what people mean, because you know we, we hear these, these phrases from the Bible, unfortunately a lot of times we don't hear them in their context what they actually mean, but so we hear phrases, and so then we sort of impute our own ideas of what this may mean. Zeal for the Lord, what is that? People think of zeal for the Lord as, as passion, as excitement, you see this a lot in, in especially certain kinds of Christian circles that are very maybe exuberant and maybe they praise loud. Uh, I go to a shouting church. I love to give it a little shout to Jesus. I love it. Let's do it it's because zeal for the Lord means shouting to God. And it means excitement. Well, n not exactly. That's not really what zeal means for, for the Lord means because guess what? You can give a shout to the Lord and in your heart be denying his lordship. <laughs> Let's say it again. You can be shouting and dancing and screaming, <laughs> shouting, dancing, screaming, praising. It's kind of a Chris Farley moment there. You can be shouting and dancing and screaming all you want to and living like the devil. So zeal can't just mean you know, getting excited about Jesus. It's got to mean something more than that. What does it mean to say the zeal for, of the Lord has consumed me? It has gripped me. I am burning with zeal for the Lord. What does that actually mean? This is really important. I think what I want to do is start Psalm 69 and read it in its context to, to, to give a few things. We'll talk about what zeal is, but I think this is really important, you guys. Verse one, save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. Have you ever felt like that? <laughs> 2020s, save me, the waters come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters. And the flood sweeps over me. I am weary with crying out. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. More in number than the hairs of my head are those who hate me. Why do they hate me? Without cause. Going to be important. Let's, we'll come back to that in a little while. They hate me without cause. Mighty are those who would destroy me. Those who attack me with lies. What I did not steal must I now restore. Let's pause here. Let's give a picture of this. Water's going to my neck. He's having a bad day. He's having a bad week. So you had a bad day. De well, 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 David's having a, a pretty, uh, pretty bad time here. Why? He's crying out. Why? Because more than the numbers of hairs on his head are those who hate him. Why do they hate him? Without cause. Have you ever stopped to wonder when you read some of these things in Psalms? Have you ever stopped to wonder... Well, how does he know they hate him without cause? Why is he so confident? This is so important, you guys. This is going to be so deep. It's not because it's super intellectual. It's just deep, okay? You can get it. I can. If I can get it, you can get it. How does he, how does he know they hate him without cause? He doesn't know every motive in his heart. He doesn't know everything, little thing he's done. Why is he so confident that, that they hate him without, without any cause at all? And then he says after that, my dear, those who would destroy me, those who attack me with lies. Why is he so confident that they're lying about him? I thought that we all had all these motives in our heart that we don't know and we, we can't know all the sentence in our own heart. That's true, by the way. But, but what's this tension? How does he know this? There's tension on both sides. What I did not steal, I now must restore. By the way, does that sound familiar? Does that sound anything like 2020 to you? <laughs> What I did not steal, I must now restore, like for, for what my great, 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 great grandfathers may have done against other kinds of people. And now I'm, I'm being called to justice, maybe because of because I'm a man and not a woman or because of the color of my skin or because of my material possessions or my class or my fill in the blank. What I didn't steal, I must now restore. 
Why does he have so much confidence? Have you ever wondered that when you read I read I read the Psalms, I'm reading David. Sometimes David has the gall to say to God, this is absolutely remarkable, and I don't recommend it. David will be like, God, judge me according to my actions. Huh. Let me ask you a question. Do you want God to judge you according to your actions? Why is he so confident? This is really important. Well, here's what I have to say about this. More number of the hairs of my head of those who hate me without cause. Why does he know? Because all through David's life, he loves the law of God. He loves the commandments. Sometimes people don't like the word law of God because in our, in our evangelical minds, we think law equals legalism. Law is somehow against grace, as if grace and law are like against each other somehow, which is not actually the case. L law cannot justify us before God, meaning we, we can never be right with God by obeying the law because we don't obey the law and we haven't obeyed the law. Everyone has sinned and fallen short. So you can't be you can't be justified. Justified just means made made legally right, if you will, before God. We can't be made legally right based on us obeying God's law because everyone has sinned and fallen short. So the law is a form of justification. No bueno, not going to happen. But it doesn't mean that God's law is, is somehow bad. So if you don't like the word law, then why don't you insert commandment or instruction? Because God's law, God's instruction, that, that can be used synonymous, all right? So you can say instruction if it makes you feel better. David loved the law of God. What is the law of God? The law of God is, is God telling us this is how you should live. This is how you please me. This is how you do what is right. You know if you're living righteously because I've told you how to live. Now we see that in the book of John, don't we? John says, hey, if you say that you love Christ, but you are living in sin, then you're a liar. Anyone who says he loves Jesus, but continues to break God's commandments is a liar. Jesus himself, our Lord Jesus said, if you love me, what do you do? If you love me, what do you do? Jump and scream and have zeal. Well, not exactly until we, well, yes, exactly. Depending on how you define zeal, which we're going to get at. Jump and scream. That's what you do when you love Jesus. No, you obey his commandments. You may jump and scream. I know I like to jump. I, I love to give a shout to the Lord and I have no embarrassment about that. I know a lot of Christians aren't as into that as I am. I love to shout to the Lord because I get excited about his name. He saved me. He gave me a brand new reason. His Holy Spirit lives inside of me. Are you saying that God has made his home in my heart? Yes, I'm saying that. It's almost too good to be true. And I got to give a shout woo, for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not embarrassed about that at all. That doesn't mean you're obeying God's commandments because you get loud and scream. Well, how does David know? They hate me without cause. How does he know? Uh, because he has the law of God and he reads it. He meditates on it day and night. That's what he says. In, in the Psalms, David says, I wake up in the middle of the night and I consider your law. David was a man after God's own heart. Why? Just because there was some sort of some mystical calling that God had. And he said, I'm making you a man after my own heart. And that's a unique thing that other people don't have because of some sort of mystical gift. I'm not attacking the idea of sovereignty, by the way. I'm not attacking the idea of God's any sort of predestinating or foreordaining power. I'm just saying that's not why David was a man after God's own heart. David was a man after God's own heart because he meditated on God's law, God's instruction, God's commands, because he understood what a lot of Christians do not understand in the 2020s, which is if you want to have a relationship with God and you want to say you love him and he is your Lord, you keep his commandments. Knowing his commandments is to know who God is. His character is revealed from them. So David can say, they hate me without cause. Am I supposed to give back to them what I have not stolen? In other words, David's saying, we have a standard right here in the Bible. I have a standard. I know if, I've, if I'm actually doing something wrong or not. That is a huge deal. And it's going to go to the definition of zeal in a second. Let's continue. Verse 5. Just in case <clears throat> it starts to sound like that I'm saying that David thought he had no sin before the Lord. He's so confident, he must think he's never sinned. No, no, no. So here we go, verse five. Oh God, you know my folly. The wrongs I have done, they're, they're not hidden from you. 
You know the wrongs I've done. They're not hidden from you. This is so important because we hear in church a lot these days that, that we don't know the sin that's in our hearts. So um, we, we should always be aware that we might not know it, but we are falling short constantly. This is true. We should echo, God, you know my folly. The wrongs I have done are not hidden from you. Well, how can he say that? But he still has the confidence. The point is, is we need to hold two things at the same time. Can we do that? Can we hold, hold two things at the same time. Yes, search me. Know me, God. Show me where I've sinned without I'm not aware. But also, God gave us a book with instruction. So you kind of know when you are in con like I am making a conscious decision to sin against God. I'm going to hate my brother. I know I'm not supposed to, but I just gave in to that sin. Well, the flesh, you know you're sinning. And you know if you are sinning against your neighbor because God gave you his instructions. So David's saying, I meditate on the instructions. I understand that to love your instructions is to love you. That's how I know who you are. I have obeyed these things and they are coming after me and I haven't even done anything wrong. Now, that being the case, God, you know my folly. You see, can we do that? Too many evangelicals think, basically, we have no earthly idea what it means to please God. We're all doing the best we can and we don't know. So nobody hold up a standard and don't be judgmental to anybody else that breaks the standard because we just have no idea. We're all sinning all the time. Well, that's because you don't believe that God's instructions matter. Hello. Let's go. Verse six. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, O Lord, God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be brought to dishonor through me, O God of Israel. For it is for your sake that I have borne reproach. That dishonor has covered my face. You see? It's for your sake that these enemies are coming. Why is that? Let's, let's move on. This is going to about to get so good. Verse 8. I have become a stranger to my brother's. An alien to my mother's sons. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever felt like that? I have. It ain't fun. This is different. You say, well, yeah, of course, we're going to be hated for the name of Christ. Yes, we're going to be hated by the world because they hated Christ first. What happens when you are lied about by your brothers? You see, it's not just the world. <laughs> I expect to be lied about by the world. Of course they don't like me because they, they didn't like Jesus. They're not going to like me. What happens when it's your own brothers? What about when you're, you're, a straight, you're an alien to my mother's sons? When it's your own family, when it's your own brothers in Christ, when the people you've been working with, what happens then? And you say, I'm bearing this reproach for your sake. How many of us can say that? Because most of the reproach I bear is for my own stupid sins, my own stupid attitude. I sin, I get really mad. Listen, sorry for all this noise you hear. I'm outside. I'm sorry you have to, I'm sorry I'm not more professional. This is the way it is. To know me is to love me. Most of the things that I bear reproach for are because I'm stupid and I sin and I've got a bad attitude and it's just, I'm just pathetic and I don't act like Jesus as I ought. Sometimes you bear reproach because you, you love the law of God and you are obeying it. And to love God and to obey God means to bear reproach from the world and sometimes even from your fellow brothers and sisters. So what does he say after this? I become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my mother's sons. Verse nine, for zeal for your house has consumed me and the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. This is what I want to talk about today. Zeal for your house. What is zeal for God? Zeal for God isn't getting excited for Jesus. It's good to get excited for Jesus. It's like going to a Jesus pep rally. I love Jesus. How about you? I love Jesus. That's not zeal for God. You may be expressing zeal for God, but that action is not zeal for the Lord. Zeal is not just passion. Guess what? You can have zeal for sin. You see what I'm saying? So, I'm, so what I should have said is zeal for the Lord is not just passion. You get a passion for the wrong things. You can zealously sin, zealously fight against God, zealously fight against the created order. That, that we all know they zealously fight against the Holy Spirit who is telling you stay away from that sin. I'm zealous. I just want that sin, baby. You can be zealous about the wrong things. Zeal for God's house is to do with holiness. 
It is about getting dead serious about the commandments, the instruction of God. You could call it the law of God, or maybe you don't want to because in your mind, law equals legalism. Then fine, don't call it law. Use instructions. We all agree we have commandments we're supposed to obey. If you want to have zeal for God, but you refuse to obey his commandments, what do you, I'm going to let you come to the conclusion. What do you think that means? I just love Jesus. No, I don't obey him though. Uh, what do you think that means? Do you think that means that maybe you and me don't love Jesus as we ought? Maybe we can't claim that we call him Lord. Lord, Lord of what? If he's your Lord, you do what he says. Zeal for the Lord means to love his commandments to such a degree that you meditate on his law, his instructions. Jesus, what am I supposed to do? I've opened up the word. I am learning what I'm supposed to do. And because I'm learning what I'm supposed to do and I'm learning who is righteous and who is wicked and what it means to do righteous things and what it means to abhor wickedness, because I'm doing that, then I begin to have zeal for you. In fact, I have so much zeal to obey you that I know that when I'm being reproached by people, I know if they are reproaching me, if I'm actually at fault or not. Now, you don't know perfectly. He says it in verse five, Lord, you know my follies. I, of course I screw up. That's what he's saying. Of course I mess up. There's things I don't know about. I have not lived perfectly. Of course I've been sinning in this. I'm just saying, according to your instructions, I have obeyed those things. I have obeyed those instructions and I'm being lied about. And now they're asking me to give back what I have not stolen. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you for two reasons. Number one, zeal for God isn't just excitement for Jesus. It is time for me and you to stop saying that we love Jesus if we refuse to obey him. How come I'm not where, with Jesus where I really want to be? I don't feel his presence like I used to. Have you considered that maybe you're not obeying his, his commands? I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying you're not justified. I'm saying, have you considered that maybe you're not obeying his commands and you're flailing around? In other words, there is a standard to know if you are pleasing the Lord or not. It is not a mystical proposition that I really have no idea. I'm not going to have any idea until I get before the Lord if, if I've actually done a job well done. Yes, you should have an idea because he gave you the commands. Are you obeying them? Hello, I'm not asking you to be legalistic and I'm obeying them in my strength because I'm so good. No, you obey them in the strength of the Holy Spirit who gives you the ability to obey them in the first place and to fight sin in a way you couldn't fight sin if you didn't have the Holy Spirit. So that's the first reason. Zeal isn't just rah, rah, re. Jesus is king or something like that. Zeal for the name of Jesus means to obey him. So you begin to understand a standard of righteousness. Am I doing what is right? And I'm just going to let you know now, which is the second reason I'm telling you this. Are you ready? This is the part that's going to be a little painful, but I hope it encourages you. I want this to strengthen your faith. Are you ready? If you want to have zeal for the name of God, it's going to cause you pain sometimes. I'm sorry, but it's true. You're going to suffer for Christ. How do I know? For zeal for your house has consumed me and the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. Even from brothers sometimes. Mm, that's hard to hear, isn't it? If you want to have zeal for the name of Jesus, it's going to make some people mad and not just people in the world. That's part of what it means to partake of his sufferings. Would you agree? Is that partaking of the sufferings of Christ to say that the people that reproach you, it's fallen on me. Why? I haven't done anything wrong. I've obeyed you. And, and, and guess what? If you've obeyed the commandments of God, that actually means you have succeeded in loving your neighbor. So that's why he says, they hate me without any reason. They have no justification to hate me. How does he know that? How is he so confident in that? Because loving your neighbor, Jesus, or excuse me, the New Testament says, loving your neighbor is basically the summation of the law and the prophets in the Old Testament. That's basically what it means. That is how you love your neighbor. It is not a mystical, subjective proposition. There is actually a standard to know if you're loving your neighbor. So if you're obeying God's instructions, you are loving your neighbor. And if your neighbor hates you, well then that's not actually fair. Why is that happening? Because I love the law of God. And because I love the law of God and I have zeal to make it happen, those who approach Christ their reproaches have now fallen on me. 
I'm telling you that because the 2020s is a tough time to be a Christian compared to 2018 and 2015. You know it's true. The question is, is are you going to have zeal for the name of the Lord? Or are you going to pretend and jump around and scream or, or wear a Christian t-shirt and think that that counts for zeal for the Lord? No, zeal for the Lord has consumed me. How much has it consumed me? It has consumed me to the point that if my own mother's sons alienate me, then so be it. I don't want it, but so be it. If the world hates me, so be it. I don't like the world either. Oh, I, I love the people, but I don't like what they have to offer. This world is disgusting. It's a trash world, and it's getting trashier by the day. It's got nothing for me. The world's got nothing for me. So the question is, is will you have zeal for the Lord to obey his commandments, even when it ends up making you suffer, even with the people that you love? Woo! Go this week and have zeal for the holy name of Jesus to see him glorified in the earth. Have a great week. Read the Bible.